and will present also some current activities. Uh, after that, uh, Andre Fonfon from the PowerSK software will present a software solution called BIM um, Permit. Um, after that, uh, Christian Schranz from the TU Wien will present the Please Vienna project. And um, then we have uh, Dr. Kai Uwe Brause from uh, the X Light Channel in Hamburg. He will tell us about um, the standard X Planung and XV. And uh, Francesca, um, please, the stage is yours. Um, we can begin with the EU Net for DPP. Thanks. Thank you, Judith. So good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for attending this session. Uh, I've probably, some of you already heard me talking about the UNET for DBP, so I apologize for that. I will give you an overview uh, on the network and the current activities which are instead evolving, so they will be slightly different probably from last time. So we start with the, um, a definition of digital building permit because I'm not sure of all your background, but maybe we are not totally uh, in the topic. And then we present this network, which is the unit for BBP, composed from several uh, participants, and the, the activities which are currently uh, going on and are planned in the, in the next months or years. So first, what is the building permit? Uh, I borrowed this graphic from the Czech project. Uh, building permit is the approval for building constructions or uh, innovation from building authorities and uh, um, how it happens uh, usually traditionally it happens with some document submissions some uh, paper document submissions which are now converted into pdf they are slightly digitalizing but what, when we talk about digital building permit we so we consider uh, data so digital data in, uh, uh, in the form of information systems, so BIM and uh, GIS data, and uh, um, some automatic processes that are enabled from such kind of management of the information. But to achieve such a very complex uh, topic, we need to tackle some challenges. So first of all, we need to uh, collaborate between several sectors because we need research, we need some practice, we need software implementers, we need really the, uh, the stakeholders to be directly involved because they are the only ones really understanding what are the needs and uh, the um, and the current practice and the the, uh, the the challenges and requirements for this uh, this use case. We need to be multidisciplinary because we need some uh, building management expertise, we need GIS expertise, we need software development expertise, processes in municipalities, laws and regulations. So it, it's a huge work and high diversity because the cases are very different uh, from location to location, uh, not only country to country, but really city by city and uh, case by case they need they have completely different requirements in terms of regulations and software requirements and the systems they use and so on. And therefore we need interoperability and standardization to tackle all of this properly. There were already some uh, uh, build, digital building permit initiatives, uh, which are more and more, uh, which are more and more, more and more developed in uh, Europe and in the world. But, They are very diverse. So, uh, for example, as I say, the different disciplines are involved. The fields which, within which each initiative was developed is very different. So, some of them were bottom-up initiatives from municipalities, others were in research, others were tackling one part of the process, uh, some were about just the data. The investment of each project were very different and uh, some of them were bottom up, others top down and others managed in very different ways. So to bring order in all of these, why it's not working? Okay. Um, 
but so at the same time we had this diverse uh, framework of projects but we would have a lot of advantages set of scalability because it would allow professional mobility the reuse of tools some interoperability to join efforts so not just reinvent the wheel each time and uh, uh, each of them each of us will find our own solutions but really to build on others achievements um, best approach choice so we can uh, reuse and adapt each solution to the specific needs and optimize investments of course so for uh, trying to bring some order and uh, to um, to pursue all these goals uh, at the beginning of 2020 we started with the european network for digital building permit it was a voluntary or spontaneous network of several uh, stakeholders starting mostly from research but immediately going to uh, municipalities and uh, uh, software developers and other <laughs> institutions and stakeholders uh, that decided to join efforts to exchange uh, the experience get got and uh, to perform some common activities in order to accelerate digital transformation and to have advantage from each other uh, outcomes as well. Here you see the three pillars uh, with which we started the network, so process, rules and requirements, and technology, which were the big uh, topics to be tackled. To join the network, it's a totally open network for the moment at least, and to join you only need to accept with those principles and now it's uh, it's been growing and growing and uh, it's composed now by more than 80 institutions um, around the world not only in europe and as you can see they are very diverse uh, in terms of expertise uh, in that table in the corner um, and uh, also for the kind of organizations they are, so RGC means research, government, and companies. So they are very different. And uh, there are also some international networks and organizations um, involved that cover more uh, than a part of that. And uh, here you can see the logos. Maybe the very last ones are not there, but uh, um, yeah mostly all uh, and within the network naturally there are also several projects that are being developed and presented and compared within the network uh, there are three horizon projects but not only them so but several uh, of them are listed uh, there in the corner and each of them have uh, um, I mean, main, almost each participant is somehow interested or involved in some national or local or wider uh, project so there are really several outcomes that can contribute to the to the outcomes of the network itself going to the activities we are meeting so we just started with simple meetings um, more or less every quarter and uh, uh, during these meetings we just uh, um, exchange the outcomes, the research results in the last period, and and brought to the uh, to the group some discussion points that we have advantage from some, from some discussion and uh, exchange together. Uh, more recently, we started with this uh, uh, series of videos that are now published in YouTube and the United channel. Uh, the United Nations also where we in the more or less one hour we tackle some more specific topics so there are a couple of presentations and some discussion we already had some on uh, the software available the process and some new projects and we are also developing some common research activities and initiatives like for example these are two papers that were uh, written together one is a, a general introductory paper and the other is a state uh, of the art uh, we are research review on the topic where we try to categorize and uh, uh, bring to the to a common framework all the work that were being done. This is the last one 
uh, it's a paper from just submitted to uh, advanced engineering informatics. Uh, we hope that we have the results of the review soon. And uh, here we try to um, categorize, to propose some categories for for analyzing, for supporting the analysis, but also the assessment and uh, finally the planning of the digitalization of the environment. Because we could see from the other initiatives that we really needed some something to bring uh, order to all the information that we had from uh, from interviews, for example, um, another group. And by you did uh, develop some, uh, performed a lot of interviews around Europe about the current status of digital building permit and the topics to be had were a lot and to bring them back to the to really understand them and to be able to compare to each other and to see where exactly uh, we should uh, uh, plan the uh, the developments we needed some categories and uh, uh, if you are curious about it it's also available in the OGC definition server <laughs> that Alejandro helped us implement it. Yeah, well, implement that thing. Uh, and um, these are others which are in progress. One is on, uh, on the process itself, and one is on the maturity model. And we are also uh, organizing some events. Two of them, uh, well, a couple of them were done in the past. But what is probably more interesting here for uh, me to tell you is the coming uh, once in, the, in 2024. So please open your agenda and note that down. Uh, they will be on 17th of April, the Building Digital Twin uh, International Congress, the fourth one, and the following two days, the Digital Building Permit Conference 2024. It's a two day conference. You can already see some initial information in the website they will be barcelona and uh, um, there, as you see here uh, there will be several associations and organizations that will support and promote this conference so we have great expectations and i hope to see uh, at least some of you there so just to conclude uh, we need to enjoy the disciplinarity and the intersectoral views and uh, uh, if the network allows it, it has to provide a common framework and then harmonizable results, find collaborators, new projects, and give momentum to ongoing activities so that uh, uh, it's really possible to disseminate and to uh, exchange the knowledge and the, the possible impacts of each activities. And uh, thank you for your attention. You can see the website of the, of the network and join the, the Okay, thank, you. Yeah, thank you, Francesca. Um, is there any question, <coughs> Francesca, at the moment? No? Okay, so then we can go on uh, with Ante. Please, um, yeah, probably you can oh. just come here and then. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, perfect. Yeah. Yes, um, welcome from my side. Uh, my name is Andre, and um, yeah, today I'm going to present a software solution to you, but also the activities we're doing around. So. This should also be a contribution to of building um, permits and, and yeah, how activities are going into practical application. Uh, so uh, our company is, is VSK Software and uh, we founded uh, 2021. Um, um, yeah, from the background of uh, civil engineering informatics uh, in Bochum and um, yeah, we develop innovative model checking software. So what that means, uh, I will come in some minutes to. Um, yeah, especially we formalizing and checking building codes to support 
um, yeah, the interaction in uh, BIM-based building permits. Okay, again. So um, our history are several research projects. So we began uh, back, back when I was at Ur University of Bochum. Um, we began in 2017 with our first project uh, to build the building permits. It was more um, focused on the process, but also um, how to incorporate um, building permits checks. Um, then we, we did a scientific advisory in uh, Dortmund, um, uh, yeah, advising uh, a real world project. Uh, so there was a special uh, special file from the ministerium which says, okay, specific checks you can um, allow with a BIM model. So it was more or less like a little pilot project, but basically it showed um, how to process in future. And uh, there there were some things tested or checked BIM based. Um, more or less semi-automatic and um, then there's another research project uh, which began 2020 which uh, focused more on the checking itself so how to formalize the building code into machine readable but also human readable um, rules and uh, especially from the, the German um, yeah, model or template building code so in German we have a uh, basis building code in the federal states they have uh, yeah sometimes we derive sometimes not derived building code and um, yeah to, to find um, to find a common basis and to, to provide templates and um, yeah we, we did a lot of uh, yeah research and um, tried a lot of with uh, programming interfaces and found out that uh, the building codes are so complex um, that we somehow need a language uh, to formalize this. And as you can see, there is um, a workflow based language. And um, yeah, um, while doing this project, also uh, some, some cities said, okay, we want to try this uh, with pilot projects. And that was um, the start of our company uh, to, to prove that in, in practice and um, we are not only um, focused on the building permit but also in general on, on in route checking and we want to provide um, innovative way to to um, to to uh, yeah formalize and check um, specific um, regulations and guidelines and um, this comes in two steps so first you need a formal check um, in every technical check, you have information requirements and you have to reach a specific level of data quality before you can even check uh, regulation itself. And then, of course, in the second part, you need a technical check where you check geometrics and uh, also advanced uh, model interrelations to, to come to a specific result. And we have three pillars we focus on. So. Um, the, the formalization of rules must be simple, of course, only as simple as the regulations are themselves. So you cannot reduce this at a certain point. Um, we only want to use open data formats, not only the model and uh, the um, report of the results, but especially to have the rules in open data formats. And we are open uh, for the exchange of these data formats and really want to reach uh, yeah, a standardized format there. So um, everyone is welcome to work with us together on such format because that is currently really lacking um, in availability and you have to program uh, to the specific tools available to, to, um, yeah, to, to check specific rules. And um, yeah, the third pillar is that this tool must be available here, so-called web-based, but more or less in a cloud-based environment, not only having visual front end, but also 
uh, making it available as a microservice uh, being integratable in um, submission platform on and on. So we heard some <coughs> there before in the other session and um, to make it integratable. That is very important in the construction industry. Um, if you develop a new service that you directly um, yeah, consider these concepts um, to, to interconnect different tasks uh, to, to fulfill a common aim. And um, yeah, the first thing, uh, checking the information requirements, um, you have the ability to um, yeah, write down all your requirements to, to the elements, for example, that all walls must have attached a valid fire rating. Um, it's formalized using the new um, building smart IDS standard, uh, so, so a, a data format for a machine readable information delivery manual. And you can define requirements uh, to the attributes of the properties and so on uh, to, to show or to, to, um, to make sure that your data quality is fulfilled. So, for example, if uh, any properties are missing, if they are empty, if you had the wrong data type, so if you have a number in a text field, it's not, not really good to, to process it uh, machine readable. Um, so that must be assured. But also if you have the admissible values, for example, for the file rating, if you have um, the, the allowed values in it, um, that is possible to check. And this one, the formal check, you can do 100% automated um, so uh, that you have the pre-requirements in the model um, to, to begin the technical checks. And uh, the results, of course, then are exchanged using the BIM collaboration format so that the architect um, can correct the model. Yeah, it, it really happens fast, for example, here in this case, in the figure, uh, the, the doors, the family of the door, doors was exchanged and then the properties were missing and the technical checks could not be executed. So after you, uh, you have a new variant of the model, you even have to check if the existing or the, the, the pre-checked failures are still okay. Yeah, that is very important and it makes it very uh, easier for all parties uh, when constructing and using them. And yeah, then the technical checks, it's more complicated uh, to formalize them. And we decided that we need somehow a workflow based definition. Yeah, so you, you may know this from, from other tools and it, it really opened, um, really opened uh, doors because uh, you can really interrelate from different positions uh, or different uh, data in the model uh, information and then you need standardized operators mathematical geometrical to to um, to to compare this information to to uh, calculate it together to uh, a common aim and then in the end uh, to, to put it in a simplified logic, for example, uh, if you would retrieve the building height, yeah, you have to do a lot of uh, data extraction, and in the end, you want to compare it against the global value, which is, um, yeah, which is uh, which is required for a specific building class in the building code. And um, here you can see. The example I was talking about. So, um, if you have the building height, yeah, you you have uh, these operators in the graph where you can filter specific elements. The spaces are in this case um, the rooms, and then you get them for stay use. It's it's required by the German building code, and then you get the height of the specific rooms. For example. Uh, here it says, okay, the highest room is somehow uh, about five meters and 73, sorry, a little bit small, um, meters. But in the end, you have a reference point 
and you use this refer reference point and another reference point, which is a, a lower requirement, uh, to come to an overall result, which is derived from the model. It's the building height. And then in the second step, you can put it into a logical connection to a required area of the building code. For example, here having um, a maximum of seven meters for a building class um, uh, required uh, by the building class. Uh, number three, you can see it here on the left hand side, um, now which, which then um, presents the overall result. And the main idea is that you may have the, the basic view on the left hand side. And if you want, you can dive into the graph and inspect some data. But if you don't need it and you use this rule, multiple times yeah then you can just just uh, yeah leave it out or hide it and then focus on the um overall result but this really has to be found out and it's not only a part of the the system to make it easy but also uh, of the building codes to to go one step towards a, a bim based or bim ready checking yeah so they they're also must uh, come changes to to um, yeah in future have a yeah a more or less automatic system yeah because nowadays it's it's an assisted system of course yeah and you can do uh, some pretty good checks but there are also a lot of yeah uh, gray zones or uh, <laughs> not not um, yeah not uh, uh, definitions which are not uh, complete and therefore you need uh, yeah another one to decide um, uh, when to accept the result or not but this could be also then played back with PCF um, yeah maybe another short example but just, just to show that you also have some advanced geometric checks so for example if you need some clearance basis for the doors yeah, where you are not allowed to have any other object. Um, that is another example which can be uh, tested in um, in a bit more. Okay. Um, yes, and and we also have a use case with the city of Bochum together, and uh, the main idea of the city is uh, to to say okay before we come to the state that we want to check it on the authority side, um, we want to, to make the architects or the people who are submitting it um, capable of pre-checking their model and uh, to, to, uh, yeah, to make a better model for the submission or the uh, submission ready model. And um, there are two, aims the first one is to have digital rules for the building code in northern and westphalia so we there we have the concretization of the the rules from the general building code to to the um, rules um, uh, necessary in in northern and westphalia and secondly to have this web service so that the applicant can pre-check the model and um, yeah, to play it the other way around to, to also have a look on, okay, what can be generalized, what can be reused in other federal states, because we do not want to reinvent the wheel every time. Um, that's very important uh, to consider. And um, sorry, this, this one is only in German, but um, they, with BIM, they want to optimize the overall process and Basically, what you can see on the left hand side is that currently, when you submit um, a building permit, uh, there are a lot of time consuming stages before you actually um, get to the it's, it's stage five on the left hand side to the actual checking, yeah, the, the, the technical check in this case. Um, and the main idea is okay. This, this checking you could do beforehand and you could eliminate a lot of um, a lot of uh, issues there and uh, then you just begin 
uh, with the submission process. Yeah, of course, currently these are also this um, this uh, this problems are also related to the to D plans. But in general, this idea um, uh, is very good if you consider to use BIM in future um, to 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 optimize in both ways. And yeah, to prove it on real world project, we we um, yeah joined together some forces so from the authority, from a large housing company to to have the um, to have project, but also what's very nice that you have the owners and planners in one boat. Um, I basically, if you want to do real project, you have to really get all people along the project um, to, to really prove. Uh, that is makeable and um, yeah we, we have an information delivery manual for that and also some machine readable rules and um, we, we check it in a web-based environment with our software and um, yeah the current status is uh, that we begin all the technical checking so you, you uh, saw before um, uh, some of the, the checkings um we we have this idm for the uh, northern italia code uh which defines all the the formal requirements and um yeah just just uh keep track of it um here again some examples of checking of the growth areas per building unit in specific um building class in germany very complex topic actually uh here you can see the the whole example um basically on the left hand side you can see okay you have a conjunction of uh, a lot of um, uh, uh, logical requirements and you can um, put them together to an overall result yeah other things fire rating requirements escape routing you can do a lot of things but yeah uh, often it's it's um, a lot of assisted approach and um, yeah one of the last things I want to present is that um, we are also thinking about or actually making it so we have funding from uh, the ministry the building ministry in northern Serbia um, to create a government version because you cannot really <laughs> we experience that you cannot let a, a, a BIM tool which is uh, yeah used to the planners you cannot uh, yeah, put that really into the government. It must be easier, it must be assisted, it must be uh, predefined with the values and uh, we are currently looking okay how we can really make a simple view on the government side for such an uh, application and um, how make it adaptable yeah, for the building portals to um, have data security, to have the authentication so in Germany, there is a good idea, yeah, a lot of things, and even branding for the city. So um, um, just just to note it, and um, yeah, the last thing is, okay, uh, if you really want to do this project, you need uh, participation in it. it. It is really about uh, bringing the parties together and um, yeah, making real world projects. And I'm happy to see that it's, uh, a lot of is happening in the research project and you could really reach some limits or not reach the limits but really are capable to try a lot of things out and we are in, in the practical application try to make it a little more okay what's what's really uh, possible and um, of course it must be also a business case and um, the second one of course you need to contents from the projects and um, if you want to, to participate please, um, please uh, come to us and we, we can see if, if there are any projects possible so that I hope <laughs> I'm in time thank you, thank you Andre um, is there any question please uh, the authorities. 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 
No, uh, <laughs> it's, it, it may be uh, also a product for, for um, not the citizens, but for the applicants, um, because it's an assisted version, but it's intended to be easier on the authority side. Yeah, to not have all the, um, the maybe oh, even the rim term, so it, it must be easier. Yeah, and the applicant must be uh, some person that works in the neighborhood, having a patient of the neighborhood, mm -hmm. and then maybe look to model and say, yeah, that, that's near my house. <laughs> would be another part to, to integrate the GIS. I, I know it from Finland, they actually do it uh, to have this uh, participation, but that might be also other projects. So, <laughs> yeah, step by step. And uh, we, we are trying to, to make our interfaces and uh, yeah, as much as uh, adaptable as possible because we believe uh, the, the future of construction software must consist of a lot of microservices yeah and uh, you need architectures for that we heard that before and uh, but they must work together and everyone must do what, what they can do best yeah um, and there's a process layer there's an application layer and uh, yeah that is is more or less coming up in the um, uh, construction software and um, that we also want we want to uh, uh, fit into yeah, um, I think there are from from the paper you wrote. I think the the OpenBeam RL language is uh, derives out of uh, research. Are there any plans to to make that the real and open standard, like in the in the standardization committee or? or so, okay. Yes, yes, we are we are talking um, to building smart already. So um, um, so the the approach itself it's not new. So there was also, you may know the new head of, of Buildings in Germany, or Cornelius Beidel, he also did something in his research back in 2015, uh, but never came to, to an actual um, yeah, applicability. And um, yeah, we are really open to, to uh, find out, okay, what, what's the solution or bring it into a standard. So we, we also developed um, on this IDS format, it, was not possible to get any geometric checks into it. Um, yes. My question. Yes. Yeah. Could you cover this with some yeah. You, you could basically um, you can do some uh, semantic uh, relations from the IDS, but basically it's uh, uh, existence check and some structural checks, um, but it's very limited. So it's it's more or less. Uh, um, a light version of this MPD XML, you also know, but it's what's good with this version, you can go forth and back. So if you have a new UI and type into the requirements and put it into the format, you can, you have one to one mapping to the UI back. Yeah, so you can export it one, from one software and import it to another software. With MBD, it was not possible before. With MBD, if you export it from a UI, you have an abstraction. And you cannot go on the on the same level back again. Yeah, so that and it, it was very complicated and and very very powerful actually. And um, so that is a good good uh, um, a good format or a good good way that that will be standardized. So the I think the 1.0 version is is now available. Um, but we need something. Uh, on the IFC and something with a, a visual uh, interconnection between all the elements. So uh, we would be very happy if, if we had um, yeah, participants in this standardization process and maybe also some of the EU projects uh, could participate from. And uh, we are also not, uh, <laughs> not afraid of competitors because we have no competitors in it. Yeah, there, there is no, um, no, no uh, progress in the actual work yeah so um that is uh, <laughs> that is hard to accept of course yeah but uh, it's it's necessary to have progress and especially in this building permit okay thank you Andre. Maybe, are there any other questions maybe later uh, after the session so thank you very much and now we can move on to uh, an example or project from austria 
and the percent funds of the Presenta Peace of Vienna project. So, welcome from Leipzig, not from Vienna. <laughs> Let's start. Um, my name is Christian Schanz. I'm the head of the research unit Digital Building Process at TU, TU Vienna. Um, 2019, the city of Vienna had about almost 14,000 building applications. And it took about six to 18 months from the, uh, from, uh, the submission to the permission. And so the, the, uh, the building authorities thought that's much too long. And they need support. And how can they get support? So it was a little bit of a different approach as we saw in, in several other countries, because the building authority was one of the main contributors to this research project. And then we started um, a research project called Riese Vienna. And it was funded by the European Union in the Urban Innovative Action. That's um, a research program which can only be or you can only submit as a city to this research project. And the city of Vienna took an approach, as Francesca said before, a multidisciplinary approach. So the main stakeholder was the city of Vienna. Then we used uh, ODE, Office for Digital Engineering, which are BIM consultants in Austria, and they had many BIM projects already done. And this is something not a lot of architects or engineering offices have done so far. Then the TU Vienna, my uh, research unit, and which was very important, the Chamber of Architects and Engineers. So this is something now we had all stakeholders on board. We had the one who gave the building permit, the city of Vienna, uh, the, city of Vienna the, the building authority, but also the planners. And we even had the planners who had not a lot of BIM experience before. And we use this uh, picture, which is actually a picture of Vienna, right of the Majors building. In the middle is the Erdhausmann, so the major building's man, I don't know. And he, this was uh, important for us to show that if you develop something like this, the, the human people are in the center of the focus. They have to use the tools, they have to work with it, and they have to use the processes. And it's a little bit like from analog of the right side to more digital and go, going more and more digital to the left side. At the time when ooh, this still this, I believe the German title, anyhow, we were looking at which point of time the building authority is, uh, is involved in a project. And it's at the beginning, it's submission approval process, then in Austria at the time of completion. And in Austria, you have to have a building book. That means you have to keep a book of the building all the time. The building authority is allowed to check the building all the time if all the maintenance was done and so on. And so we saw that all this part, the building authority can uh, have a, a, a surplus value if they're using BIM. At the beginning of our project, we were thinking about a maturity level uh, model of digitization of the building authority. Level zero is what we know, the standard paper-based uh, uh, permission process. Level one would be a digital one where you use, uh, you get a digital bidding <coughs> and you use a platform. And at the beginning we thought, oh yeah, that's a nice small step. But we realized when we talk after project, and it's important, Riese Vienna has finished in March of this year. When we talk to all the other countries in Austria, all the other parts, this is the first main step because all the smaller cities are afraid of a BIM-based uh, building permission process. They said, oh, this is much too much for us. But if you say you have level one already, if you have this platform and if you use PDF and so on, then it's a motivation for them. And uh, we were talking to the city of Linz and they're saying, yeah, we're working on, on level one. So it's just one more step to be this level is very important because you, you start with the platform. And we were hearing that, you know, at some times at the beginning, a lot of time is lost because maybe the application is not complete. Papers are missing, documents are missing. And using a platform, you can guide the applicant to submit all the documents which are necessary for this kind of building, for this kind of application. So after this step, you have a fully functional platform. The city of Vienna did this and finished this about two, uh, 2019. 
And then they realized it's again regulations because you could not submit only digital because the building law said you have to hand in paper plans. So you have to wait for the next regulations changed because you can, uh, until you can change the building law. So you have to keep in mind that building laws not only describe how a building looks like, but also describe the process of, an, of a building permission process. And so you have to look at these parts too. And this one was done in 2019. Um, welcome to the building submission platform and it guides the applicant through all the steps so that the application is complete. Then we want to integrate open BIM models. This is what we call the level two, an open BIM approval process. And everything, all the documentation, the checking and so on is uh, model based. So if you hand in and you get a report that something is missing or something is wrong, you get it by PCF file. And this is where Prezi Vienna stepped in. And this was a three and a half year project, it's now finished. And to give an outlook, it should be implemented into the city of Vienna, as they said, it's not my time they said, about 2025. Uh, and it will be always possible also to hand in paper-based paper plans. Because this is one of the big problems. We do not have, let's say, 100% of the architects do not plan in BIM. It's much, much less right now. It's growing, but still there should be a possibility to hand in also paper-based plans. And one part is not only, as I said, to change, to develop tools, but it's also to look at the, at the process. And so during the pre Vienna process, so when, when you look at the name, for example, Mr. Schneider, he's, one, he's an officer of the building authority. He was mainly involved in this process. We changed the process. We look, where can you have a surplus value if you have a BIM, uh, a, a BIM model? What can you change? Where can you do steps maybe earlier, different, in other way? We were doing that uh, during this project and we had meetings about every week together with the building authority. And we learned a lot how laws were developed. You know, sometimes you have a, a regulation, you don't know why is that this regulation in this kind. Yeah, there was a project 2002 and we had to make a new regulation. And this is like a simplified way. So at the beginning you, you have a project that you, then in, in Austria, you need to create a survey plan. This will be reviewed by the building authority. And what we invented there for us was this model pre-check. And this model pre-check uh, is a tool where the architects can check as often as they want, anonymous, their BIM model, and always get a PCF report. And one, it has only one layback. It's, it only checks every rule which can be checked automatically. And this depends also on the building regulation. I will tell you about that a little bit later. But this is a tool, the architects love it because it also checks the formal criteria if everything is in the BIM model you need, but also some of the regulations. And we hope in the future, more and more regulations will be in a way that they can be automatically checked. And then we thought about how can we integrate, of course, BIM, then artificial intelligence and augmented reality as technology, uh, tech, not technological methods in our process, and where might they have a surplus value? That's always the point that the building authority saves time and has more time to, for the real task to check things which the software cannot check and to support the applicants. Uh, we have realized at the beginning we need three models for the checking process. And I will go to each one of these, and each one of these will be an IFC. That was very important for us and very important also for the bidding authority. The bidding authority would not use anything else than an open BIM standard. Why? First of all, it's not allowed to have a restriction on the architects to use any kind of software. You cannot say use Archicad and or use Revit, and that's it. No, they are not allowed to do that in Austria. And they didn't want to do that either. And the long-term usability. The building authority has to use the plans quite long. They have to have it for at least, I think in Austria, 70, 80 years. And this is something I see can offer. When you look at the left side, it could be Revit, it could be Alpine, it could be Archica, it doesn't matter. 
But if you open a text editor, you can't read it. At least I can't read it. And that's the problem. If the software can't read it in 70 years, we have a problem. But if you, if you look at the right side, it's a text file. And maybe even ChatGPT can program you now an IFC viewer if you want to. And I'm not a fan of ChatGPT because it makes a lot of nonsense. But it's easy, even for students, to program a viewer in the future if the software doesn't exist anymore. And that's a very important part of it. So what, the first thing we look at the building application model. That's actually the architecture model, which has all the information here, which we just already had in the submission plans, but normally in 2D and maybe in additional documents. So that's our building application model. So we define which kind of elements do you have, which kind, which information of the surrounding do you need in, in, uh, in, the plan, in the model. And we define it and gave it to the architect so they can they have a, like a, a plan, what to do, a document, what to do. Um, and then we also define which kind of, what all the information, that's, what do we need, except, for example, for sound insulation, heat protection, and so on, which is IFC standard, which was already developed by Building Smart Austria, or which is something which is new, and of course, you see the left side is German names uh, in the Prezi projects. Maybe some additional information they have to offer so that we can make the checks. And on the right side, we have the regulations. Uh, WBO is for the Wiener Bauordnung, so the Vien Viennese building code. And the OEP guidelines, these are um, guidelines which are for structural analysis and they are valid all over Austria. Besides that, Austria is like Germany. We have in all the countries, we have different regulations, which some countries don't have. The guy from Finland told me they have the same regulations all over the country, which is nice, which will not be possible, I guess, in Austria for the next few years. I hope Germany leads this. <laughs> all, Austria, we always rely on Germany. Then we have this reference model. And the reference model starts with this verified surveying plan. So we have the exact surrounding and we have all the building lines. And what it does, it makes a surrounding of what is allowed to be built. So it's like also the kind of roof which is allowed, the building height and so on. So that we can take the, the building application model to check it against this reference model if, it, um, if it's in between this uh, allowed surrounding. And of course, you have some regulations in Austria uh, where you're allowed to go over this, these lines, for example, a balcony. And therefore, we had to teach Solibri how to calculate because we had to check, for example, in Austria is a regulation, in Vienna is a regulation, the balconies, the, the, the summary of all the balcony lengths is allowed to go over the building light at a maximum of one third of the lengths. And uh, so we could check it for one third of it, but we could not add all the balconies together and then say it's less than one third. And the third one is the service information model, because we realized that there's some information which cannot be shown in a geometric way. And in, Austria, in Vienna, you have over a certain area, you have some, several areas, and these areas define, for example, you have to have a flat roof. And one third of this flat roof has to be a green, has to be with uh, plants and a green roof. But it doesn't define in which, in which way. So we take this information and we use artificial intelligence for this legal text analysis, because this was written uh, to this uh, development plan. There were additional documents and telling this. Or another regulation could be you're not allowed to have a window on a main room to uh, to this uh, to the street because maybe the street is very loud it's a special street and so on and artificial intelligence was not very successful and that's the reason where ChatGPT now, now comes into the game because ChatGPT has a big success rate in some parts because it has billions of documents to be trained and when you look at all the uh, all the, the, the development areas in Vienna, the amount of documents is far too less to train artificial intelligence. It would have been much better 
to use a guy for the three years and rewrite all these documents in a machine readable way, which was not done, but might be done in the future. For example, it's also a task for the future if we have different documents, they have to be now written in a machine readable way. And these old documents, they were developed over 150 years. So you can think about how an, an office of a building authority was writing text 150 years, the style was completely different. That made it difficult for artificial intelligence. And all this goes together for the building authority to check. Again, once uh, a few um, about the timeline. So the, the, the applicants, they prepare the survey plan, they prepare the application documents, and the survey plan is not then checked by the building authority. And then you can do the pre-check. And after the pre-check, is when the people submit their project. That means the creation of the reference model and of the service information model is done by the bidding authority only after submission. And this is a small problem for the pre-check because everything which is checked by the reference model or this information, the service information model, cannot be used for the pre-check. And we want to work that a little bit step by step, this information shifts to the pre check because then it's much easier for architects also to check it. And even if they, uh, uh, if they use a little bit different and the check would fail, they can argue why they can help the building authority much better, why they want to have an exemption, for example. So then we check in this process between all legal material, which is a valid for Vienna, which is the Vienna building code. And of course, uh, right now, still the Vienna Garage Law and this Austrian OEP guidelines. And then we realized of all paragraphs, only 54% are relevant for digital check because all the others just describe which kind of documents you have to hand in and how the process works. But it has no information for a digital check. And then when we use this 54%, 86% of this we uh, uh, transferred or mapped into checking queries. So right now we can check 86% of everything which can be checked in Prise Vienna for a digital building permit. And by the way, it's about 1,600 paragraphs we evaluated. So we were sitting together with the building authority, checking every paragraph, every number in the paragraph, step by step, writing in an Excel file. It's a huge Excel file and then defining what we can do and how we can check that. Oh. Um, I might fast oh, slower in German because we are going, we are not running all the time. So, um, and the reason why we did only fulfill 86 we were aiming for 100 percent the reason why we were just fulfilling 86 percent is because we realized for one part the modeling effort for the architect could be much higher than the effort the time saved at the building authority so uh i would go over that so what we did we had this building your checking routine we had structural checking routines and out of that we at the left side you can see 72 we could create with checks in Solibri, uh, and we had used the API for about 20% of our checks, and then the other part, it's about 30%, we created our own rules. Uh, and we created 2000, about 2,600 checking rules uh, and uh, 735 test queries to cover this 86%. Uh, all the time in the steps creating the checking room, we made testing, then we tested the pilot phase. We always did a feedback loop together with the Chamber of Architects, together with the Building Authority, together with ODE, which is this, uh, which is this BIM consultant. And at the end, we had a rights information matrix, which means uh, what I told about this exit slide where we have all the regulations in there and how we can map them. Uh, we had the definition of LOE and LOG. We had check rules and we had the check rule documentation. So it was very important that the building authority by themselves can change the checking routines. They can change everything in there. They don't need us anymore, which is might be bad. But I think my, as, a, as a university, it's my goal that to, to help others, to help themselves to do the job by themselves. 
Uh, we have three types of checking rule, the natural lighting. So uh, we have these automatic checking rules, for example, in Vienna it's defined that you have the, uh, of the main rooms, you have a certain, the windows have to have a certain area depending on the area of the room. And this is also the percentage, it's about 10%, is also depending on the depth of the room. So if the room has a depth more than five meters, it goes up. It is 12%, 13%, and so on. This is a tedious work at the building authority's office. You have to measure the rooms, you have to check the area of the windows. It's done completely automatic. This was an API programming of, of, of my group. Then we had also this escape route analysis. There were several escape route analysis, but we implemented everything the building code also defines for escape route. That means is the is the hallway safe where you're where you're uh, where you're escaping? Which is the furthest away point in the room which has to be considered? Is the door opening in the right direction? If the door is not opening the direction how you escape, you are not allowed to use this door as an escape route. So we are using all that together. It's just a partial or semi-automatic rule because the law defines that the building authority officer has to define if the last room is really a safe room. So he has to check if the room is okay. So at some parts, we still use semi or partial automatic checking rules because the building authority officer has to do something because the law requires him. Then we had also some existing checking rules. For example, in Vienna, they also have to control the statics. And so we made something where you can see all the load bearing elements. And in the first view, a building authority officer can have a look at it and see yeah, it looks fine or it doesn't look fine. Let's go deeper into statics. Then we made a pilot phase with real projects. So last summer, uh, architects were, were uh, submitting 13 projects dual. So the, these were real projects they were uh, submitting. They submitted it in the normal old way as paper plans, but also did BIM models and submitted also BIM models. So we could check if the building authority uh, found the same errors or if everything was fine, we could compare it each other. What we also wanted to do, we wanted to look at different kinds of software products and therefore we used students who modeled already submitted and, uh, and, and uh, permitted projects, which were already built, and they remodeled this in uh, these different software products. And so we could check, is the software IFC export in the software product a little bit different? Do we have to add some information? So uh, what we also did, because we had this our participation, at, after the open BIM plan check, after the, 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 the model is checked and verified that it's okay, uh, neighbors have special rights. They can make objections. This can take some time. And we realized, but yeah, already I think everybody knew, neighbors are seldom architects, civil engineers, they're seldom experts. So they, they're looking at plans and have no idea what the lines are meaning. It's very difficult for, for neighbors to realize what a building height looks like. And so what we developed is an augmented reality tool where it starts, where you can, um, where the, the building authority sends this QR code of this, of, the, uh, of this project to the people who are allowed to, to view it. And they can, uh, Here's the, the kind of the information, they get a QR code, then they can download. And when they download it, at first they get a, a model. They get a, a, a building, which is not the, the building they should look like, but they get an explanation. What is meant by building height? What are the things they can object at all? And after that, after they say, yeah, I've read that, everything, you know, make the checking mark, then they get a real building and they can look at it. And we can use even, this also in the building authority, so that they can make the objections if you want to. Um, and in the, in the actual negotiation at the building authority, we can use this model and they're synchronized. So the building authority officer can so show, I show you now this balcony, we're talking about this and everyone gets this highlighted on his tablet. So, and this was a very, uh, through Vienna. 
And what we think is the next would be the next step for us is to have a 3D basis of the development plan, which will develop step by step. And then, because then you can make a, a model based checking also of the reference model, because it's already then in there. And you can check much more if you have this part. And it's also kind of a completion, as we heard in the last section, of a digital twin of the city, because every model which comes in there, at least part of it can be used by the building authority for a digital twin. You cannot use this. For example, in this augmented reality case, there was not everything into this augmented reality code because a neighbor cannot object the toilet size of a building, for example. So we had already some uh, uh, publications. We are right now writing on the publication. We were doing three years of work, and then we started to make publications. Uh, the QR code actually leads, I think, to the website of us where you can download all these uh, publications if you want to. There was Priscilla and, and, and I was running. <laughs> Sorry for this. Yeah, thank you very much. I thought yeah, we have to move the questions after the sessions. After all, we want to hear something about standardizations um, from the uh, uh, Paula. Um, the, the, yes, a, a, a little brief intro, in a, intro, introduction of, uh, of, of myself. My name is Kai, Kai Krause, and I'm the head of the, the uh, department digitalization. And uh, planning in and, and like building in the um, um, agency for geo information and, and, and so, and so like terrain. And this is a, a part of the Ministry of uh, Urban de Development and Housing in the three in the Atlantic city of Hamburg. And maybe, yes, um, maybe we have a, a, a solution for the momentum level three for the model based um, the had development plan and for checking against um, the model based and the uh, the the, 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 the development plan so who we who we who we are and um, the the optimization and simplification of uh, of processes in the construction and property in, in, in industry and at all levels of government is is, is is promoted by the use of uniform standards and interfaces so as as we as as we know, with these standards, both uh, the, uh, the approval and uh, further out, um, out authorities and the building owners and planners can uh, relieve really, because really, really the letting and approval processes can be simplified and the those processes uh, more quickly. The, the exlight to the standards in, uh, improve communication between all stakeholders and the planning and per halt, per halt, per halt, per permitting pro, pro, pro process. They, they, they ensure that everyone when they speaks the same language, they are open and uh, they are for you, for, for royalty free. The, the aim is to standardize and promulgate digital application and uh, 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 approval processes in the area of any building to the use of standardized data formats and, and, to, and to processes. Standardized data production contents and formats are necessary for the IT systems of the actors involved in the planning and building processes to understand each, 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 each other and explaining and ex, ex bau, ex straße, ex breitband are, are binding standardized data, data models. They are, yeah, the X is an, is, is an, is an, is an, is an XML based standard. Um, and these the standards, they do not compete with the building smart standards. They are alone. The standards, um, the, they are, um, yes, they are, um, the explaining and the explosives that the standard are um, GML application um, profile standards. They had used the uh, implementation rules of the ISO 100, of the ISO 900 and 100. The, 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 the slide shall the plan, plan and, and bound or the and, 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 and construction. Is, uh, is, uh, is located in the agency for geo information in so in so in so in, in so weighing. and uh, we operate the standards. They are had to had to had to 
Du tut mir denn, das ist der typical German word, the IT, the IT Planungsrat, das ist der IT Planning Council. And they are, and the, and the, um, is we uh, um, operate the standards um, on behalf of the, of the, of the IT Planning Council and on the based on an, on an administrative agreement between the federal government and the federal state to the dates. So, um, um, yes, they are, they are binding, more or less, they are binding. Um, X, uh, X Breitband and X, X, uh, X, X Bau um, are not in GML application model standards. Um, they, uh, they are process standards that are used to um, standardize the exchange between messages um, of, of the, the exchange of, of messages between IT application used by planning and construction stakeholders in the context of planning, designing and building and board bond approval pro, pro, pro process. Both the standards are based on the um, modeling rules of the code. It's an, it's another German wording. Uh, it's a coordinated office for IT standards that are general um, defines the model rules for standards for XML based standards in the administration. But um, we have also now, um, so the X is not, yes, it's not only the white. Um, um, Econym, because we have also JSON based um, standards. Now, um, the X um, planning and the X transfer, for example, we have also um, the, um, geo JSON feature and geo, 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 geometry based um, um, schema. So, what we do, so what we, do we, are pro, we are provide, provide rights, these um, standards. We, uh, we uh, publicate this uh, the standards. We have an um, internet platform on um, xxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxxx
SSL or instance documents, for example, X GML documents. So in um, in uh, in Hemo, for example, yes, we, uh, we implement these uh, standards. Um, in the, um, all all binding dentures that we had designed in the city planning offices in the, in Hemo, use this uh, using the AutoCAD application WS WS um, and um, according to the object model of, of X planning and X exported as X, X plan GML. And the, and the, X, the, the exported X plan GML files are uh, made uh, available as OpenGIS com compliant web, web, web services via our urban data platform. And now we've we can, this is an, another, so this is an example of an Vectorworks for, for, for example, Vectorworks um, in, 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 um, in, 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 in Vectorworks, it is in, in it is in, uh, possible to in, in, for, for this X, X, X GML file we are in, a, we are in, a, in an interface. But also you, you can also see um, in in halt um, toward this um, yes slide um, the the halt um, um, visualization style they are not defined in the X -X GML file the the halt um, visualization of an imported X -X GML file is uh, in the is in the responsibility of the target system. So and now there's another yes another step for for being um, yeah legal mandatory um, because uh, two weeks ahead ago the German Bundestag passed in a in a in a, in a amendment of the Building Act which makes the use of the standards um, defined by the IT planning board or actually. Council, in this case, it's X, 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 mandatory in the preparation of the urban land use plan. So, this is a new, um, this is a new aspect or new article in, a, in, a, in, a, in, in our building code that you, that you have to use X, also in the preparation process now. And um, in the city of Hamburg, yes, we have. We, uh, um, we digitized on the, in the project. It's, uh, it started about 10 years ago. Ago, ago, um, all 3,000 legal land burning land use. Then in X, X, X and GML and uh, enthalt provide provide them as WMS or WMS services and new plans. In Hamburg, they have also been since five years ago. I mean, they have to be had signed in, 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 in accordance to the XPNG in external standard. And so you can uh, yes, you, we have a, we have our geo portal, geo portal um, minus Hamburg AE, geo online. So all um, yes, all binding ventures are are provided as a WMS. Service this in detail as in W um, 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 TS service. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tile service, and so, so you can navigate very quickly. And but uh, we also have now as uh, a first implementation of the new OGC RP services. We have an implementation of um, OGC RP um, for features and OGC RP um, for vector tiles services as uh, as 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 well. And, and uh, you can click on a yes on on everywhere on your on this web and, and you receive the legal binding info inform information as a get feature info and this get feature info answer isn't so nice until now we have we have we have no because it's the, the German planning law is very complex and uh, and and so we have to. Yes, we have to split this information on our several texts. So the feature uh, so info is uh, more um, readable for, for, for example. 
And uh, we can, uh, this is next, I mean, it's a digital twin of the building gang law. There are many digital twins, and one twin is a, is a building law twin. And, and yes, the, um, the, the usable plot area is, uh, is, a, a visual, is a visualized as a, as, this is also very difficult to explain. It's a, 3D planning law halts. I don't know what, um, maybe it's something um, compatible with the service information model in uh, Vienna. I don't know, maybe. It's, uh, it's, and uh, there might, there might, there is, a, there is a possibility also to have the textual regulation as, 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 as well. But it's, yeah, it's, a it's, it's more difficulty to, uh, to have a um, wide feature info, also how to present this feature info because the inform information is so complex. But you can, yes, you can check this the, the um, twin of the existing city against the twin of the future city, the future city under the aspect of the building law. It's not, the, it's not a general um, the, um, um, digital twin. And we also can provide, provide right, these data in the, in the European standard in the in Inspire and Datus, the data model as, uh, as, 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 as well. We only, we also need, we only need one um, uh, transformation um, rule and so yes, the, the, the extend GML data are transformed to um, Inspire and Datus data. So, and this, this is also yes, an, an experimental digital twin of the planning law. The first digital twin I saw, I, I had you just saw was, uh, was in, in her coded as a city GML file, and now it's in, in her coded as a BIM file. Uh, but it's more ex experimental. We had cause. We don't have really an uh, um, IC data model for urban districts. So um, this is um, this is an IC space, and that's absolutely wrong. So it's a, it should be an um, an IC spatial zone. But IC spatial zones and um, um, many of the BIM model, modeling tools um, can import this IC. Um, um, special zone in a, in a, in a means. So, um, yes, but, uh, but, uh, but at, at this, you can see the, I think this is the yellow one is, um, uh, this, uh, the, um, this, 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 this three dimensional, um, plot areas you can build. And the purple one um, is uh, this are the um, parking spaces and the garages, for example. And you, and you can also see so that's one one passage to uh, one building, and and, and there's a Sion Sion area um, little um, yes space. So this is. Um, Compatibility facility. So and now X X X bow. What is X bow? X bow describes the content of of its messages in its building application for for its procedures in a standardized structure. X X bow ensures a loose free exchange of information and data between the data between the parties in its work in the construction within the approval procedures under building regulations. Um, it's, it's, um, you can see now that uh, yes, there are there are ex, uh, exchange processes that have been the um, the the high building authority on the, um, the the building application authority at the, at the right hand side and the left hand side and that it does an architect and the, there's a process in the approval of the um, application. And, and, and for all this um, um, 
yeah, interaction you, you have an, a message, it's an XML based message, and um, with this content, for example, this is um, the, you know, it's in German, it's very, it's, it's a, yeah, I, I did not say it in English, but um, yes, it's a, you can see it's an XML schema and you can uh, um, visualize uh, this XML schema in the tree structure. And you now you can see there's a field for the number of stories, for example. So, um, um, yes, uh, yes, there's one combination. So it's, it's, it's clear or it's standardized. Yes, they, yeah, where yeah, we can find in a Google, um, in a building Google, uh, where the information um, of the of the tutorials, for example. So, and um, we have also a tool for like, uh, generating such, such extent, six thousand cents documents on the open code the website. So, everyone is able yes, to, um, yes, <laughs> everyone might be able to um, fill up such a message and send them to the office. So this is a um, very easy way to, to, um, yes, to send an, uh, or to request for a building. And you can type in the type of construction, the spatial location on, on the, of the building project information uh, about the planning law, and also the footprint of the project in had coded in had GML. So, and yeah, this, uh, this, this, this is our future idea. And I think it uh, might be um, the, the last, um, the, or, uh, one of the last um, the, um, slides. So, in the context of the implementation of the Online Access Act, um, it had uh, administrative services in the Online Access Act implementation project. Uh, this implementation project is called Citizen Participation in, 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 in Information. And Hamburg is uh, Chris, uh, responsible for the implementation of uh, this, um, uh, um, yes, this service had uh, had uh, uh, had planning platform is had for had uh, had uh, the, the idea is you can search for all plans that are in had germany um, that are um, binding so you can see in the online it's the sex or searching for otc um, Searching um, it's a searching platform in the in the in the pro the platform for patient events. And um, the idea is that an, an applicant or an design author can can import this six time GML document in had this program like in had had vector works. And um, by had in had reporting the, the expand GML data in a BIM OS, um, in a BIM OS um, sourcing tool, a uh, model based comparison of the planning law parameters, such as a floor area index, the site occupation index, the floor area proportion of the site to be con had um, worded by the physical structure, just the number of floors with the corresponding parameters of the um, design. Uh, um, proposal can already be carried out during the creation of the BIM model. And the, the had, um, and in had this did many um, key features, such as um, um, such as floor areas, um, usage units or parking spaces can automatically uh, um, extract it from the BIM model and automatically transferred in an um, XBO application usage. So, so all documents associated with the um, communication step are had to become, become had bind and send in XBO specific Container, so it's not necessary to fill up all this information in a portal. It has, it has gained, the idea is to extract all the information. You can you you, you have to provide the 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 the, 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 the authority um, with an X about message, 
to a building application portal and then the municipality and they have in the background they have rules and they, they can check this explain gml and the, you know, they can check the, the x message and the ef in the IC file and um, yes and we can they can they can respond to the API. So and it's um, this is very shortly I can and these are our standards we are responsible we are responsible for digital data exchange exchange standards for yes for um, spatial land use plans for route planning for in, 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 in Google to halt and feature we are not responsible for the BIM modeling because this is uh, this is clear this is clearing smart is responsible therefore and but we are responsible for digital process standards um, for um, yeah for uh, for approval processes uh, in uh, um, in the building construction civil engineer in construction in future also for um, plan preparation. So I, I hope I can give you a short idea of what the x actually is responsible for. Yeah. 